Robin Lundberg Show here with you. Had to run the show a little early today. Got lots of practices to get to uh, in, in the evening. And I, I didn't want to go up against uh, Dynamite tonight either, given the all-in footage that was supposed to be released. Plus, I play basketball on Wednesday nights. So just a, a myriad of reasons. Had to run the show a little bit early. Uh, I want to start by saying RIP Mr. C, hip-hop legend, uh, radio DJ, iconic New York radio DJ. You ever heard uh, Jay-Z's Death of Auto-Tune record? This one's for Funk Flex and Mr. C. You know, that kind of influence on the, the hip-hop culture and community. So I, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, send a shout-out to, to Mr. C and, of course, his friends, family, and anybody uh, who he touched over the years, including the fans. So RIP to Mr. C. We'll get into a little bit of hip-hop later in the show, a little wrestling later in the show, a little X-Men later in the show. Um, but want to start with some basketball. Some basketball. And this lady named Caitlin Clark, woman named Caitlin Clark, you may have heard of her. Perhaps you've heard of her. And here's the thing. Um, every episode of this show that I've done that Caitlin Clark was a part of or she was a headline for or her name was in the title has done well. So who am I to spit in the face of that? Who am I to not, uh, you know, talk about that? Is this going live to, to YouTube right now? Looks like the, uh, is this StreamYard software not working on YouTube? I know they had a problem earlier with that. Let me just check that in the back end real quick while I'm live here. Because I know that was an issue earlier today and that would be a bummer. It says it's live. So hopefully it is recording and, and going live and people are, are getting that, uh, you know, just not giving me the uh, that information on the, the back end right now. So apologies for, for that. A uh, little interruption, but every episode I've done on Caitlin Clark has done well. And one question I've been asked in the Caitlin Clark discourse is whether that would translate to the WNBA. And I think that we've seen that it is already going to translate to the WNBA. It is already guaranteed that we're going to see her effect and her impact go over to the WNBA. This is not a case of a flash in the pan situation, just a college basketball situation, anything like that. She is is already an impact on the the WNBA. And how do you know that? Well, look at some of the decisions that are being made ahead of her debut, including including 36 Indiana Fever games being broadcast nationally. 36 of 40. I think they had one broadcast nationally last year. 36 out of 40. That is a lot. That's not a couple. That's not a handful. That is a lot. And that is, you know, kind of incredible when you think about it. Kind of incredible for that league and that sport. Not to mention, it's not just, you know, the, the decision to televise the games. If you look at the ticket prices for Fever Games and for Caitlin Clark, they're going way up. Uh, here's, here's an example from the LA Times. Last season for the Sparks, tickets cost $16 for a family of four. Now they're selling for 112 to 140 on StubHub for Caitlin Clark. Some of the teams have changed venues already in order to make way for Caitlin Clark. And the, the attention that she is drawing. Changing venues, where they play because of her. Look at Las Vegas Aces are moving their matchup against the Indiana Fever and potential number one pick Caitlin Clark this season to T-Mobile Arena to accommodate 8,000 more seats. So you can't say 
that her impact isn't being felt. You can't say that she's not making a difference. You can't say any of those things because it's plain to see. It's plain to see that she is. She is indeed making that difference, having that impact. People are gravitating towards her already ahead of the WNBA. And the, the draft is coming up in April. But here's the thing. Not only did the women's national championship game outrate the men's national championship game, I'll tell you this much. The Fever game, her debut in the WNBA is going to do better than the NBA playoff game it is up against or any NBA playoff game in that vicinity. There is no doubt in my mind. There is no doubt in my mind. So not only will that effect take place at the college level, it will take place at the professional level as well. Mark that in stone. Etch it in stone. Write it down. And and I know the haters are going to come out because anytime somebody gets attention like this, that happens. Anytime somebody has talked about this much, that happens. Anytime people praise someone like this, that happens. And I've called Caitlin Clark the Michael Jordan of women's basketball. I mean that. She's not the Steph Curry of women's basketball. She's the Michael Jordan of women's basketball because Steph Curry is a stylistic thing. Shooting from three from where she shoots from. We all get that. That's impressive. But it's beyond that. It's the fact that she is changing the, the interest level, the culture, the celebration of the sport. And it was a little strange to see some of the W ladies and former W ladies sneak hating on her a bit because this is the moment that that league has been waiting for. This is the player that that league has been waiting for. This is the... What's that, Rohan? I guess, sorry, my youngest son is trying to break in here. Let him, he can maybe make a guest appearance. What's up, dude? I play with Miles. You want to play with Miles? Oh, well, I have to, I'm doing a show right now. You want to come say hi? But you got to get out of here. Come here, come say hi. Real quick. You can make a quick guest appearance since it was just your birthday. This is Big Row. Everybody say hi to Big Row. He just turned three. Say hi. hi. Okay. This is what happens when you do hi, a hello. show in the afternoon. Ronnie, you want to say hello? Yeah. This is Ron Ron. Say hi, Ronnie. Hi. Hi. All right. Go take care of your brother for me. All right. All right. So where was I? Um, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the moment that the WNBA has been waiting for. This is the, you know, player, the sea change, because it's never going to be the same. The league is never going to be the same again. That's the, the honest truth. And for anybody wondering about whether that attention that she drew at the college level was going to carry over to the pro level, you are seeing it now. You are seeing it now. You're already, it hasn't even started yet and it's already happening. Tickets are up. Venues are expanding. National TV games are increasing. And she hasn't even stepped foot. And again, I'll say this one more time for effect. Mark my words. Mark my words. The debut of Caitlin Clark, which I think is May 14th, most likely, ESPN 2 doubleheader. Indiana visits the Connecticut Sun. Whatever the NBA puts on that night, if there's a playoff game that night, and I'm assuming given the date of the schedule, there would be, Caitlin Clark will beat it. Her game will beat it. And maybe multiple of her games will beat the relative competition from the NBA. I don't think that's in question. I think that's just the truth. And people can not like it if they don't want to. They can try to hate on it if they want to. But it is what it is. And the thing about it is she got there on merit. You know, the attention, yeah, is it extra? Is it, do you have people capitalizing on it? Sure, look, I'm capitalizing on it right now. 
I don't know how this show will do necessarily. Maybe the, the bubble has popped a little bit, but the um, every episode I've done so far on Caitlin Clark has done well. So I saw some Caitlin Clark news. I was going early. I figured I'd lead with a little Caitlin Clark. What do you guys think? Kevin Zwicker says, I don't remember an athlete getting this much hype coming into the league since Zion. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I think to be real, she's gotten more attention than Zion. I don't know if, if Zion got this much attention. I mean, he he got a lot. He got a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Zion didn't get a ton of attention. Of course he did. But I don't know if it was quite this because I don't, I don't think Zion changed the sport, right? In, in the sense of, you know, when Zion got to the NBA, you weren't thinking, oh, wow, you know, this is a, a change for the, the NBA in a positive direction. This is this is the thing that's going to elevate the league. The league was already there. And the same goes for, you know, college basketball. There had been big Duke games in the past. Zion didn't change the way people viewed Duke or how many people watched the national championship game. Caitlin Clark has completely revolutionized that. She's completely elevated women's basketball as a whole, as a, a professional league in the WNBA, in the collegiate level, at the way it's perceived in general. She's elevated it. So she should be praised, not hated on for that. That's why I like what Don Staley said after the game when everybody else seemed to be hating on her. So that's um, that's really all there is to it. It's really all there is to it. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate uh, you guys as always. You know, and this Caitlin Clark topic, I'm sure I, I'll talk about her again at some point in the, the near future. We can continue to uh, talk about her on today's show, of course, as you guys get uh, up to speed on. Sorry, I put a message out that I was going early and then StreamYard had these problems connecting to YouTube. So I didn't know if I was going to be able to do a show. Uh, but I here I am. I did get it running. I got it running early and we're off and running. Ernesto! Finally, Ernie has made the show. Ernesto, do you want to make up for not being able to go on the last time? I, if you're... If you're um, up to it, I can send you a new link and see if see if it works this time. Ernesto tried to get on the show that that uh, celebrating wrestling show that I had on and and couldn't make it. <laughs> he, you can just chat if you want, dude. I'm just I'm just messing with you a little bit. Oh, he says yes. All right, let me let me get a um. Let me see if we can get Ernesto on here to make up for that because Ernesto's a character, so I would never be upset about uh saying hello to Ernesto. Doom doom doom. All right. If you can make it, click that link, Ernesto, and I'll I'll get you I'll get you an appearance on the show to make up for that. But you know, uh if I'm being real with y'all, it's been a rough couple of days for me post WrestleMania because I was uh you know you can still hear it in my voice. Such a epic experience that we um you know, and we're tired coming back and, and all that. And then afterwards, you know, I've been looking forward to it so much. It was like the, the one thing I was looking forward to in this uh, time of, of struggle here in the, the Lundberg household. I think maybe I finally need to shave. I was liking the way this was filling in, but maybe it's a little too rough now. What do you guys think? Let me know. Um, I, you know, I was, I, I've never had a facial hair like this before. I'm, I'm keeping at least the stubble at all times from now on because I do like that. But now that it's grown a bit, um, I'll see if, you know, let me know. Let me know if I should keep it uh, growing or shave it again and start over and let it grow until I shave it again. But regardless, you know, a tough time in the, this household. But uh, my wife lost her job or is in the process. Uh, you know my situation. Um, my son being in, in the hospital uh, just a lot, right? And and I was looking forward to WrestleMania, and then it's over. 
<laughs> you know, it happened. It was the coolest thing of all time. And now it's over. And so I was worn down and tired. And now I got reality staring me in the face on top of that. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. Roll with the punches, deal with it, bounce back, uh, persevere, push through all those things. But uh, yeah, I, I won't say this has been the um, my favorite week of, of life <laughs> so far, <laughs> thus far. Uh, tonight, you got the the um, the all in uh, ordeal going on with with AEW, and and I'm starting to think that's a swerve. I'm starting to think that they're going to show some other footage of the young bucks at all in and do a ha ha on the fans. Because if you go back through the the social media posts, they've never actually mentioned CM Punk's name. They've never actually mentioned his name. And that makes me think they're using the speculation of CM Punk to draw up the interest in the show. And then they're going to hit people with the swerve, which I don't know how well that's going to be received, to be real with you. I, I don't know how well that'll go over. Um, but that, you know, there is like people are um people are already criticizing them for the idea of airing the punk footage because it just seems desperate and there's not much to gain. If they then swerve it, I wonder what the backlash will look like, even from AEW fans. We'll see. I mean, gotta gotta let them put on their show. Can't really judge their show until you see their show. That wouldn't be fair. But it, it's definitely going to be the most interest they've had in a long, long time. I think that's pretty clear. I think that's definitely pretty clear. Um, but you know, I, I say here, Drew McIntyre would be looking forward to dynamite the most because he's had this feud going with CM Punk and he's the one that I think um, will uh, use that footage if it is Punk to get the most run. You know, Drew is is uh, the guy who he, he's been going back and forth with Punk. Of course, Punk cost him the heavyweight championship at WrestleMania and we'll see how how that works out. Kevin says they're going to use the footage to set up Jack Perry's return, I bet. Yeah, I think so. I mean, because Jack Perry was the guy. Let's uh, see. Ernesto, what's up, man? What's up, brother? How you doing, dude? How you doing, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. What's up with you? Not much. Uh, the only day I have off that I'm not coaching my son's game. By the way, we won on Monday. We crushed the opponent. Even there you go. I got to be good at their little kids. What what sport? Uh baseball. Okay. What age? Uh he's 10. Okay. His first home run. Yeah. Oh, there you go. What's your son's name? Uh Zyler. Zyler. Congratulations. This is a Zyler. Tell him I thank said you, thank you. Thank congrats. you. It's it's one of the most rewarding things, right? To coach the little kids and see the smiles uh, on their faces. It is, it is. And you really gotta tone it down in a way because you don't want to be you don't want to be that coach that gets kind of the axe because I've actually seen it in this league that coaches and parents get to that point and they get escorted out. I mean, escorted out. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be that person or that coach. I mean, I've, I've been there to kind of, you know, tweak the kids better, make them, and they're responding. I mean, the kids are responding and they're, they, you know, they're getting better. Yeah. What do you think of the facial hair? Should I shave it back down now? Nah, dude, you look good, man. Yeah, you look good. yeah, you look good, man. You look rugged, dude. You look rugged. I like the fact that you, when we first met, you had no facial hair. It was nothing. It was baby face the whole entire time. You had nothing. This is distinguished, bro. You've got some years going on, man. Yeah, no, I mean, I like it. I just wonder, like, at what point, like, I, I don't know how to groom something like this because well, I've, I've, you know, you know what? You don't ask me. I'm not the one that has to rub your face every night. Ask your wife. She's the <laughs> one that's gonna be like. I think you gotta you gotta shave it now. You got she's the one's gonna let you know first. It ain't me, buddy. It's gonna be yeah. her. All right. Any, anything else you got on your mind, man? The floor is yours while you're on here. Uh wow, WrestleMania. I mean, dude, I mean, now that they 
expand it into two days. I mean, I don't know how much you can take. I, you, you're, 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 you're example number one. Look at your voice. That's two days of WrestleMania screaming. <laughs> right. I can imagine. How'd, how'd, you, how'd your son enjoy it, by the way? Is this his first? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's only nine years old. Yeah, it was his first. Uh, he enjoyed the hell out of it. Like, you, the smile on his face was so genuine. And I, I told this story on the show the other day. But uh, when he came back from school on Monday, because he went in late, and then he came back home, and I told him, that people were saying it was the best WrestleMania ever. And he's like, people are saying that? And he's like, was it? He's like, was it the best WrestleMania ever, Dad? And I was like, do you want it to be the best WrestleMania ever? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, it, you, it's the best WrestleMania ever. You get to say you were at the best WrestleMania ever. And, he's just and like, you know what sucks? Now you have to try to match that. Oh, that, or, 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 or his experience, he's like, I'm, am I going to top that? It's, I don't think so. I don't know. Are they going to be now from now on, two days of WrestleMania from now on? Yeah, yeah, it's been like that for a minute now. I, I don't know how many years in a row, but it's it's not like brand new that it's been two days. That's that's been a that's been a um. For at least I, I the past five, starting, at least, right? What's that? For the past five, at least, I think it was. Yeah, something like I mean, definitely last year, definitely the year before that. Uh, I have to look it up to remember exactly when. There, why don't I do it right? When did WrestleMania become two nights? Uh, twenty twenty one. Oh. Okay, we're in a couple of years in. I was wondering, I was like, when did he start expanding it to do two days? It, all this oh, no, no, no. It started in the pandemic, I think, actually. It 20, did. It might have been 2020, I think. And okay. then 2021 was the first live one. Because they did do the COVID WrestleMania. I remember, you know, it's funny because COVID is when I got so back big into wrestling because I, I started watching, you know, it was one of those things that you could watch then. It was the only back. thing that was playing. It was the only yeah, thing that they, was going on. Going and and I went back and watched through the catalog, and I I bonded with my kids over it. So that's where yeah, that's where I got back into it. Well, I got yeah, uh, I got the, my son saw his first WrestleMania. This is the first one that he saw that I I got him to uh, see, and he was he was like he looked at me he's like when was this going on? And I'm like you never knew that wrestling was going on. I was like this is this is all they do, and he's like. Really? Like, I never knew that wrestling was like that. Like, he just knew it as far away. When we, I put it on, he was hooked. He sat, watched all the intros. He kept on looking at me going, they do this? And I'm like, yeah, they do this. This is what they do. So what was your grade of WrestleMania? Oh, uh, man, I had to be the main event, dude. The main event was just, I mean, they, I knew they were going to do that. I knew they were going to try to make it into that. The second day, make it powerful, and they did. They, I mean, they're doing the right thing. I mean, and The Rock, he's got the ear, he's got the pulse of the, what the people want because, as we all knew, this wasn't going to be the play. That wasn't going to be the storyline. It was going to be The Rock, pretty much was the storyline. But he, he, he heard the rumbling of the of the chatter of the people, and he is the people's people. So he heard. They didn't want that. They wanted Cody Rhodes to get a chance, and I'm glad that they gave it to him. Closing the book on his story. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the, the roads, the rock, the the the. the I mean, the, the people don't understand. It goes decades. How long these people has been? You know, generations of generational fighting. I mean, these guys, the wrestlers, have been. You know, you, I mean, I just saw before I get on with you, I saw a snippet of the rock when he was 14 years old watching his father with uh, Tony Atlas. I think it was mm -hmm. Tony Atlas and his father that were the tag team. Uh, champions and you see a 14 year old rock watching him and i'm like that's him that was him as a baby face rock man and you know now he, now he is the executive the now executive the final boss. boss the final boss <laughs> well, how's Ernesto, everything else man how's everything else with you i was just saying it, it hasn't been the easiest week to be real because um so i, I mean I, I recap but uh, wifey is also going through a job thing uh, at the same time as I'm going through a job thing, yeah. as the same time as my son's going through a health thing. And I've been looking through forward to WrestleMania so much that, you know, I'm worn down afterwards. So that's one part of it. And then it's like, that's over with now. <laughs> and it's like, here's reality. You're like, ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, well, don't forget that it's like reality is telling you, hey, don't forget, you still got problems. Yeah, yeah, you still got, but. Hey, look, last time, last time I think I, I had anything similar to this was stick to sports. So I was talking, talking with you guys then. I'm sure, you know, you'll have I'm, to I, dude, 
I've been with you since day one. As any as people don't know, I've known Robin since he was the producer at ESPN, and I was calling in, and I that's why me and Robin got the report. It's from the years of me calling in doing the stupidest things and saying, as you can see, I'm still a Knicks fan, Robin. I'm still not going to change that. There's nothing wrong with being a Knicks. I mean, good. I mean, you you made it through the hardest part. You're you're in the good part now. <laughs> finally, we're on the other side. We finally got there. We're in the promised land. Supposedly, we finally got a star that's able to play with others. Don't want to say anything about Melo. But anyway, you know, I mean, finally, I mean, I can't say all my teams are the same. I mean, the Mets are going through a trauma. I mean, it's funny. We wanted, a, we as Mets fans, we wanted someone that spend money. Now we have someone that spends money, but now we can't spend it correctly. I mean, I don't know, dude. It's now it's. Now we don't know how to spend the money because now we have the money. So it's now it's we have to learn that. Now we have to learn how to be meth fans and have an owner that wants to buy everything to a kitchen sink. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You're still gonna buy it anyway. I don't know. I mean, at least now we have an owner that cares and wants to buy stuff, but I hope he spends his money correctly because right now it doesn't look great on paper. I mean, I don't know. I see I see holes in the Mets organization. Well, you know, when I get back on New York Sports Radio, I'll, I'll pay more attention to the Mets. I can't tell you I've been following the Mets <laughs> day in and day out. I only got, you know, enough room on my interest. But, Ernesto, really appreciate you always supporting. Um, and I figured I'd give you a chance to come on here, hop on, chop it up a little bit. Thanks. For and I, I figured out my phone thing because that took me a while. No lie. It took me a while to figure it out, how to go back into my Google thing and fill yeah. and, and allow it. Yeah, it was it was a process, man. So I, I, I got it. I got it. Thanks, man. You I got hope it. You're good, man. You got it for next time. Appreciate it, Ernesto. Um, so, so, guys, if you ever want to be a part of the show, you know, uh, just hit me up. I will. You know, the, the chat is open, of course. The, the chat will always be open. But I, I will also, you know, give you the opportunity to hop on as well because you're you're the you know you're a big reason why this exists or the only reason i guess i mean i guess i could be talking to nobody but like i was saying before uh the the caitlin clark thing uh daydream this I, I tweet back and forth with her all the time uh she says i hope the nba is smart enough to not have an nba playoff game against caitlin clark's debut because her viewership is going to blow them away and i said that earlier in the show mark my words when that game Whenever, if there is a game going head to head with Caitlin Clark, the WNBA will outrate the NBA just like women's college basketball outrated men's college basketball. A couple other things on the, the rundown for today. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for the Drake response, just like everybody else, to first person shooter. I saw Joe Button, Joe Button, I saw Joe Button speculating that um, the Drake. Record could drop on Friday. We shall see if that indeed happens. We shall see if if Drake indeed finally responds. I don't know if Kevin is still in the chat, but uh, Kevin probably also eagerly anticipating his his hero coming up and stepping to the plate. But I, I saw the uh, the chess picture. It came across my timeline of Drake and, and J Cole from First Person Shooter, and I realized I have not played that song since this all went down and i don't know if i'll ever play that song again <laughs> you know uh and the 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 photo the photo of them just looks silly in retrospect because how kendrick came and just knocked those chess pieces off the table i mean i there's the, the old jay-z line it's funny how one birds can mess up the game but like i don't know if we've i can't remember uh any verse shaking the table the way Kendricks has in a long, long time. In a long, long time. Kevin says, I'm here, man. The goat will deliver the goat. We'll see. What does he get? Like, tell me, what does he say about Kendrick? I'm very curious. What are What is the critique of Kendrick? What can you say about Kendrick? What, what is the am, ammunition against him? Ernesto, back in the chat. I'm sorry, but I don't think Drake has any kind of response that can match up to Kendrick. I think he's going to come out flat. Uh, I mean, ho hopefully he doesn't come out flat, but he never even wound up responding to Pusha T the next time around, right? Because uh, Jay Prince said, you know, I'm squashing this beef. To, to have what happened to him with Pusha be followed by this happening to him 
with Kendrick, that's not a good look for him in the long term. Not a good look for him in the long run. We shall see. Look, I'm 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 hoping. I like the I like the the sport of it. So and, and Drake has to respond. He's compelled to respond. We shall see what he says. The last thing I had on the the rundown and the rest of it can be your comments and, and interaction was I haven't seen the newest episode in full yet, so I can't give you a a full review. Um, but I have seen how it ends. I couldn't avoid that this morning. I did see how it ended, and that was X Men ninety seven, and and people have been giving it rave reviews, rave reviews. And here's the thing, and I've said this from the beginning. I've said this from the beginning. The X Men are the greatest comic book property of all time. Their stories were always the illest. They were always the most grounded in reality, the most mature, the most three-dimensional, all those things. So it's not surprising to me that the show would capture that if it's doing right by the characters. And so far it has, and doing right by the, the source material is right there, you know? Um, and, and it seems like it's much more mature than most cartoon offerings would be. But I'm not surprised in the slightest. And I saw, again, I saw, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, because I know it, it did just happen. But... Um, yeah, the ending of it was pretty intense, pretty intense, and involved some big time characters. And you know, Marvel getting those properties back cannot be slept on. Cannot be. I mean, look at the promotional stuff for Deadpool that's happening out there right now. There's Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine freaking suit, in the Wolverine suit. And as much as the X Men are not just a wolverine based thing you know they're they're iconic characters beyond simply wolverine wolverine is a needle mover you know people forget how popular wolverine's on the mount rushmore of most popular superheroes i think you look at spider-man superman batman wolverine that's the four you could make a case for iron man now, before you couldn't, before you couldn't, you know, pre MCU, you couldn't make a case for Iron Man, but post MCU, you can make a case for Iron Man. Before that, though, just those four. I mean, Marvel's most popular characters are Spider Man and Wolverine. They never had them before, which is the reason they had to build out the MCU on the back of other characters on the back of, of who were considered their lesser characters at the time, the B, you know, the Avengers were the B team to the X-Men's A team. So Thor and, and the big characters, Thor and Captain America and Hulk, of course, and, and Iron Man, all well-known characters, but all below Spider-Man and Wolverine. And now they got Spider-Man back, of course, and we've seen the reception to a lot of the, the Spider-Man related properties. And they got X-Men back. As Kevin says, Wolverine is the dopest. I was him three years in a row for Halloween as a kid. Kevin, you at work right now? Let me know if you're not at work, because I know you're probably, uh, these, these topics are right up your wheelhouse. I could throw you right back on to talk about everything we've talked about on the show before I get out of here. I'm not right the right guy to ask. I'm not a Kendrick fan, so my criticisms aren't the typical thoughts of the general public. Let me know if you're at work or not, because you are uh, you and I's interests align almost perfectly. That's why uh, you might be the number one fan of this show. You're up there. You're certainly in the running for number one fan on this show. I, I, I give you that. Um, I don't know how long the delay is, but by the way, like with these streams between when I'm talking 
and and when that people actually hear it you know another thing i gotta i gotta do is um i gotta start uh doing videos outside of just the live streams too but this live stream is the the podcast and the the show uh which is available now by the way on apple and spotify and all those places that you listen to a show um so ernesto says he's number one <laughs> Well, I, I don't know, Ernesto. I, I think Kevin is here every day. I don't know if you're here every single day. There's a bunch of you guys who are here most days or many days, but I don't know if Kevin's missed the show yet. So I, I, I don't know. We guys, I could have you guys compete. I could bring you back, Ernesto. You could click the link and come back, and and are you know depending on if Kevin's at work or not. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you hit me up in the comments section. I will get back to you in the comments. Um, like I said, I should have an announcement in the next day or so regarding um, some wrestling related content. For those of you who like the wrestling stuff, uh, not on this channel, on a, uh, on a different channel that's bigger than this one um, regarding SmackDown, but I, I won't announce it until the, the direct party announces it. I think that's only fair uh, when you're talking about these things, but I, I, that, is all but confirmed to be happening on Friday. So just letting you know, giving you a heads up on that. Uh, Doug, the developer says, hey, Robin, what did you think of Joker? Are you excited for Joker 2 with Lady Gaga? I don't... Um, I, the Joker doesn't really... Joker does it for me as a villain. Like, I think... What's the second Batman called? Dark Knight whatever it's called the that was excellent and Heath Ledger um oh by the way Kevin says he, he's at work right now but he's off if the show is at normal time tomorrow we'll see uh tomorrow's schedule I my son has a voice it might be late it's either going to be early or late tomorrow it's either going to be after eight o'clock or before seven o'clock like in the six so let me know what works better for you guys like around you know, it, it, this time or after eight uh, tomorrow. But yeah, to not uh, to go back to Doug Developer's question, my issue is Joker. I, I don't want to see a movie about a homicidal maniac, like like as the protagonist. <laughs> I, I, I you know, like I, I'm not interested in Joker in that sense. Um, you know, the character, the acting is good, and and obviously it was received to a certain extent. But I like joker much more in the vein he was, is done as the villain from batman ernesto you're back did you want to say something i'm the best number one i am i'll take you on wherever you are kevin i'll take you take you to the streets i'll knock you down i'll put the chair across your head i will bring you down buddy you're the man i'm the man um, all right so wait do we need an ernesto versus kevin showdown the number one <laughs> fan battle and and you guys can each state your case <laughs> nah for kevin kevin's probably you guys time because I, I like my my son's schedule doesn't allow me just like it doesn't allow me to try to be on every time so i catch the show afterwards i'm not there always live but i try to be i try to be you catch me because you be we're flapping the time zones every time. One time at three o'clock, one time at four. I gotta put down a scalpel down. I got somebody's brain all over the place. You know, I can't do that. AJ says he calls dibs on number seven biggest fan. <laughs> 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 he's 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 climbing up the rankings. Uh, AJ is is like I remember he, AJ. He's been he's been around. Well, he's been following me from afar, and and he really connected with me recently. And uh, I've appreciated that for for sure. But yeah, Ernesto, I was just giving you giving you a hard time. I know, I know, I know dude. Hey, hey, I I love you, bro. No matter you're a net fan, bro. I mean, I still love you for you being a net fan. And as much as I try to convince you, I'll never forget trying to convince you to be a Nick fan. I'll never forget that day because you actually just went, no, I'm I'm gonna go with the Nets. I forgot what it was the reason that you had gone with the Nets at that point. And I, I think it was just because at the same time you was with uh, Max. I think you were, that's when we were on with Max. You were with Max. And you just wanted to go against the brain and just go, I'll, I'll be a Nick fan. I, I think it was that. Well, I, no, I, it, was, uh, it was a combination of things. I, I had covered the Knicks and been around them very closely for a while. 
And I was sort of beaten down by that, that whole experience, not to mention, and this is going to sound lame, but you know how big a Jay-Z fan I am. Like he was essentially the official mascot of the move over to, so I really started oh, with oh, rivalry. And then when I had the kids or I guess I had Raj and Ronnie and the D'Angelo Russell team on the Nets before, right before Katie and Kyrie, I remember yeah. doing a, I did a segment on SI where I was saying, KD should sign with the Nets. This is a great situation. But it was that year where I saw the direction I thought they were heading in. And I was like, I want to root for a team with the kids. So I, I jumped on the band. You know, I, I I don't know if it was a bandwagon then yet, but I definitely jumped on board at that time. And then once I decided I was going to jump on board, I can't then unjump. You know, like then, no, then I feel that. like. Hey. No, you can't do that. You're right. That's good. You're, you're being honest, Richard. Now, I need to ask you, though. How in the hell can they have a team like that, they had like that, on paper, and not get it together and not be able to, I don't know. I mean, I thought, I'm being honest, that team across the river looked really good. And it was, I mean, I I, I thought for, for a fact it was going to be at least a good title run for a couple of years. And then, I don't know, just people started asking for their papers to leave. And I was just like, what's going on? I mean, I thought they had it all over there. Well, they should have won in 2020 uh, or 2021. I'm sorry. The injuries really are what kept them from winning that year. Harden got hurt and Kyrie got hurt in the playoffs. Remember, they went seven games with the Bucs. Yeah. Put on the line. I was at that game uh, in game seven. After that, uh, it was a myriad of factors, like not just injuries, but obviously COVID and the whole situation with Kyrie. And it just – some of it was bad luck. I think it was injuries and bad luck yeah. combined with – Guys who aren't the strongest up here. Yeah, Flatlanders. <laughs> flat Earthers. Flat Earthers, yes. Flame can be flatter now. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, want ask, I want to ask, if you ever get a chance, ask Kyrie, what was the eclipse? What, what caused the eclipse? I saw people, you know, uh, I saw people g giving him crap about that. Here's the thing. The eclipse, I also saw people hating on people watching the eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was strange. Like it's, it's it doesn't happen. How often does it happen? It doesn't happen that often, right? So every 40, 20 years. Yeah. So what's wrong with experiencing it? <laughs> like I mean, people are making it sound like they already saw one because it happened. It happened in my job. There was there was a moment that people were like, "Oh, it's happening now." So I, me, I took a couple of minutes to look outside. There was another uh, coworker that was like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna go see the eclipse." And I and I'm older than this guy, so I was I looked at him. And I was like. You make it sound like you just saw one last year. Dude, the last time this happened was like 20 years ago. When did you, when did you come around? It don't come around so often, man. This is not – it's like a championship. You come around once in a while. You got to you gotta see it when you see it. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we went out. I mean, it was cool. Like, I mean, is it like – is my life forever altered because I saw it? No, but – No. I, but why not? You know, like – uh, you know, I'll, there's a chance I'm not here when it happens exactly. again. Exactly. <laughs> the next one is in tw another 40 years. Was it another 20 years? Who knows what's going to happen in 20 years, people? See yeah. it when you got to see it. Hey, since you're watching, since you got a Wu Tang shirt on, any reviews of the Wu Tang um, stay at their, uh, they, they got a Wu Tang show now in Vegas. I, they I'm had a residency? Gonna... I haven't seen it, uh, obviously. I'm but... going to Vegas. I'm going to go see them. Oh, that sounds like a good time. I wanted to see if someone actually know uh, has actually seen the show yet, but I'm going to go see them eventually in May. In May, I'm going in May. So th they already started it. They started in. It just started. I think it was in March, March or April. I think just now they just started the, the residency. And I forgot what hotel it is, but yeah, they're there. Wu Tang is for the children. It's got to be the MGM if it's the Wu Tang, right? Yeah, right. It's, I think it might be MGM. Yeah, isn't that the Ghost Joint? And they, That's they, the Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ernesto, man. Appreciate you as always. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got for the show today, guys. Uh, cycling through real quick since it is afternoon and I got a few more minutes. Caitlin Clark is going to give basketball fans WNBA fever. For people who are questioning whether that's going to translate to the WNBA, we're already seeing it. You've got AEW Dynamite tonight. Uh, the all-in footage supposed to air. I think they might be going for a swerve and a little bit of a troll there. But if they actually do show CM Punk, Drew McIntyre is going to benefit the most from that in a content standpoint, from a content perspective. Kendrick Lamar and the fallout to that like that verse continues. 
where uh, first person shooter just doesn't hit the same. I can't say I'll, I'll ever listen to that song the same way ever again. And X-Men 97 is getting rave reviews, which is not surprising when done right, because the X-Men are the best comic book characters of all time. So if their story is presented appropriately, if their source material is done correctly, then of course, of course it's going to do well. Of course it's going to do well and be good. Because it is the thing. You see a, a picture of um, Jey Uso on the, the WrestleMania stage with his son. And I, I just share it for a second because that is that is my son's favorite wrestler. He loved main event Jey Uso. He was so hyped when main event Jey Uso came out in the actual main event of Ooh. WrestleMania 40 to stop Jimmy. And, you know, Jey was the first one, right? It was Jey and then John Cena. And then Seth, and then Undertaker. And that Undertaker thing, I'll, I'll remember that experience forever. That gong hitting and the reaction in that stadium. All right, guys, uh, that'll do it for me and the show today. Unless you got any more last-second comments, I'll give you a few seconds to get them in. Uh, last-second questions. Any comments that come in later, I will answer. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment uh, You know on the on the comment part of the videos <laughs> and uh, make sure you share all those things. Sorry. I had to, you know, I jerked the time around a little bit. I was late last night, uh, early today, but life scheduling, all those things. And I want to make sure I get the, the show in rather than not have a show at all. Uh, and I, I wanted to announce this a little bit earlier today, but there was an issue with StreamYard and, and YouTube, but I think that has been corrected because it looks like this show is streaming appropriately and effectively at this very moment. Um, so until tomorrow, when I'll be back, I hopefully I'll get a show in tomorrow. Same Robin Lundberg channel.